Hello my lovely friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to continue talking about post crossing very <laughs> I know I always say this very quickly and then we're 40 minutes in. But today really is going to be a very quick sort of part 2 about uh using post crossing as a way to uh, meet perspective pen pals. So there was a couple things that I wanted to touch base on. Uh, there was a couple questions um, in the comments section from yesterday's video that I thought um, I would address here directly because they're, they're pretty standard questions and something that you really do need to consider. Um, and I will respond to those comments as well, uh, but I, I wanted to put it in a quick video for anybody else that would be having similar concerns. Now the one of course is, do you use your home address or do you use a post office box? Now I will say, with my very short experience only having sent 194 postcards, <laughs> um, I would say most people use their home address. Um, but there are also a high percentage of people who do have a P.O. box. Um, depending on where you live, and I, I get the feeling that in certain parts of the world, people have P.O. boxes um, simply because they live in a really high density area where it's not like in the good old days where people just, you know, everybody just had a, a mailbox on their, on their front, uh, at the front of the house, right? Um, you would be surprised at some of the, the addresses that you see. Some of the ones out of China and, and Russia and, and they just, or, you know, in India, they, they are, they're so different from the kind of addresses that we are used to here in North America. So that's always fascinating because they just go on and on and on. It's incredible how like really big and long some of the addresses are that you'll find. Um, which is, I think, part of the charm of, of post-crossing because these are some of the interesting things that you learn about where other people live in the world, right? So all I can say about whether or not to use your home address or not is whatever you feel comfortable with. I mean, the whole thing with having pen pals and, and, and being a part of the snail mail community is that you are giving up a certain amount of your privacy, for lack of a better word. If you want to engage in this whole world of, of snail mail and happy mail, they need to be able to find you. So you have to give up an address of some sort. Now, I have done both. I have used my home address and I have used a P.O. box. And I have a P.O. box for my business so that when I list a business address, um, online, so on my website, here on YouTube, like anywhere that I need to put an address that's public, because I work from home, I don't want my home address just plastered all over the internet because that's kind of weird and creepy, <laughs> right? And so I have a I have a, a PO box that I use for business purposes, and I don't get a lot of mail, sadly, to my P.O. box. So I like to use my P.O. box um, for post crossing because I actually get some, some use out of it, right? Oh, who's trying to call? Spam, <laughs> Mr. Spam. Um, so you just have to decide you know, what do you feel comfortable with? I know in some places a post office box can be quite expensive. I remember talking to a woman who lived in France and I just couldn't believe how much it would cost her to get a, a P.O. box. So there's that. Um, if you have another address that you can use, a friend's address, I don't know, like, there's ways to get around it if you're not comfortable um, sharing your home address, which I totally understand. Um, but it's, 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 uh, what is the word? It's, it's just a hazard of the industry that you have to give an address, right? So do what is most comfortable for you. Now, um, the other thing somebody had asked me about was an age limit. So I went on and looked on post crossing and they ask that people who sign up with their own profile 
are 13 years of age and over. And if they're younger than that, that they're signing up with a parent. And um, which is just great advice overall. If you're, if you're dealing with the internet and strangers on the internet, um, <laughs> you know, again, with all of these things, please, please, please proceed with caution because you just don't know. There are some people out there that will use something like post-crossing for nefarious purposes. Sadly, it happens. Um, but I think post-crossing for kids is a really great idea. And in fact, they do have a section on the website um, at post-crossing about using post-crossing for children, for students. I mean, you know, this is really what's interesting about it is that all kinds of groups use it for people that are trying to learn English, um, people that want to learn about different countries. Um, it is widely used in schools all over the world. Uh, so, so when I say it's a relatively safe platform, you know, this is, this is a recognized worldwide platform. Um, but you just have to use caution and just, you know, be really careful. If you're going to set this up with your kids, then parental guidance certainly is needed and required to help kids write postcards when they're looking at the the profiles of the people that they're going to be sending the postcards to i really do think it's a great a great activity for kids and parents to do together or kids and grandparents or kids and aunties <laughs> you know or a fun thing even that you could do um in a in a classroom i mean there's just the possibilities are endless um, because everybody is on post crossing, old and young, and from all countries, um, you know, it, 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 I just can't say enough good things about what a, what a wonderful community it is. But be careful, as always, when it comes to anything, um, when you're dealing with people that you don't know on the internet. Yeah, be careful. So by all means, get some postcards, get some washi tape, get some stamps. Have fun with your kids and um, don't give out any information, certainly that's not required. And if you are concerned, then yes, I, I you know, a, a P.O. box is not the worst idea ever. And you can get them. They're, I mean, they're everywhere now. You don't necessarily just have to go to a post office to get one. So um, it could be a fun little thing. You know, you get in the car and we're going to the mailbox to see <laughs> what's there from Post Crossing, right? Now, the other really fun thing that I wanted to share with you quickly today was in the video yesterday when we were sort of searching around and looking at the site, I was showing you how you could go in and be a little nosy <laughs> and see what other people were sending each other with postcards. And we were looking at one, one postcard from a gal from, I think she was from Japan, and I was showing you how to heart it so that, um, you know, whenever you see a postcard, you know, if you like it, give it a little heart for sure. People love that because then the person who sent the postcard, you get a little notification that says, oh, so-and-so liked your postcard. So I got a message today, an email um, that I'm going to show you here from the gal who we hearted her postcard last night when I made the video. And she was very kind and sweet and said, if you would like to get, I have similar postcards um, still like the one that you hearted. If you would like to receive one from me, please send me your address and I'm happy to do so. And I was just like, ah, that's so perfect because it really illustrates and I didn't have to fake it or make it up. <laughs> it really illustrates that this is how this community works. And there's ways in order to meet people and, and, and find like-minded people on this platform um, who could potentially become regular pen pals for you with postcards if you're interested. So I'm going to write her back today and I'm going to be like, absolutely, I would love one of your postcards. So here's my address. And oh, by the way, if you give me your address, I will send you a postcard from Canada. So um, 
it, it really is quite brilliant and it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be a difficult process. Now, mind you, she responded very quickly, but she's obviously quite keen on sharing. And um, if you go in and you like some cards, um, don't be surprised if you get a message. Um, and if you see that people are interested in direct swaps, you can also reach out and say, hey, um, I see that you're really into cats. I'm really into cats. Would you like to swap postcards about cats? Um, and then you just see where it takes you, right? Um, and, and the whole thing to, to keep in mind is that pen pals come and go. Some pen pals will end up being pen pals with you for many, 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 many years. Some people you might just swap two or three times and then that's it. And that's okay too, right? Now, the other thing was um, I wanted to show you. I did up in the video yesterday, we had two cards that I was going to send out this weekend. One is going to Slovakia and the other one is going to the United States. Now, I didn't write anything personal on the back yet. But I wanted to show you how I've got the identification number right at the top there so I don't forget to put it on. Because I have. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Twice. Only twice out of 194 postcards have I forgotten. I was in a hurry. I was in a hurry. I wasn't thinking. I was rushing things. It was my own fault for not slowing down. <laughs> So then I put the date there, of course. And it is really, you'll notice that people love to put their, their weather up there um, on, on the, in the card. It's just, it's a universal thing. I don't care where you come from. I don't care if it's sunny all the time. If you live in Australia and it's sunny and it's beautiful, <laughs> everybody wants to tell everybody what their weather's like. And you know what? It, it, it is one of those things that for me really makes me, it makes me giggle, but it really warms my heart because it's just another one of those things that no matter where we're from, we want to talk about the weather, you know? So I put on there that today is minus five and it is still snowing and it's the third day of spring <laughs> and it's still snowing here. But anyways... And then I had bought some um, washi tape, specifically for snail mail that I like to use. And then I, ha I just put a little sticker down in the corner there to decorate it. I cannot send out a blank postcard. It just seems wrong to me on a thousand levels. And I did have some nice stamps. And I talked about this in the other video. You know, sometimes people do say, can you put a nice stamp on it? Let me tell you, from somebody who lives in Canada, our stamps can be incredibly dull compared to stamps that I get from around the world. Like to the point where <laughs> I want to just call Canada Post and read them the riot act because our stamps are just... <sighs> when you sit, start to see the kind of stamps that you get from other places, you're going to be <laughs> really impressed. So anyways, when Canada Post comes out with some pretty nice stamps, I am quick to jump on that bandwagon because um, our overseas stamps are atrocious. They have been the same stamp for God knows how many years. Anyways, that's a whole other topic for another day. So that was my update for you. Um, I am going to keep this really short. It, again, if you have further questions or you know, concerns, by all means, put them, leave them in, in the description box. It does seem like a daunting idea that you're going to put your address on a platform where there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Because we've been repeatedly told for good reason, don't give out personal details. But you can't have snail mail without an address. That's just, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. So, um... There is no vetting process on post crossing, so there is that to keep in mind. But once you become a part of the community and once you get involved, you realize that 
you know, for the most part, everybody on there is a snail, snail mail geek, just like we are. And they're there to make people happy. They're there to be a part of this um, give and receive that that is what makes snail mail so much fun and so wonderful and, and such a, a great thing to be um, involved in. And why it is such a great thing um, for kids as well to start them early in on you know, really understanding and being enthusiastic about sending cards and letters um, and learning about people from all over the world and, and what their customs um, might be. And, you know, there are people out there that are trying to hard to learn English as a second language, and this is a really great way for them to be able to practice their writing skills in English as well, right? And then, of course, their reading skills when they get it. So... Personally, I think the pros outweigh the cons, but I'm sure there's people out there that have stories that would, you know, make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. So with everything, use caution, use common sense, and um, yeah, do, do whatever you feel is best for you and your family. So I'm going to go and I'm going to write these up. And when it stops snowing, I'm going to make my way over to the mailbox and pop these in. Um, and don't forget to take your photos of these as well when, you, when you're getting Just a getting quick ready. little uh, interlude video here for you. Letting you know that you have the option here to print the address out if you decide for whatever reason that you do not want to use your own handwriting to print out or to write out the address. Just hit this button and it'll bring you to a page where you can print out your pen pal's address. This is where you go to upload your photo. So if you hit this button here, it's going to take you here where it says choose your photo and then you quickly just, you know, like you normally do, go into wherever file on your device or desktop where you've saved the image, upload it, and then that way when your pen pal receives her postcard and she goes to register it, then she will automatically have the photo of that postcard. Um, it'll be there for her. The other thing is if you go into where your postcard is, the ones that you are sending out, see how it says here underneath image, there's this little green circle with a, with a cross through it. When you upload your photo, it will show there as well and then that way you'll be able to see if for whatever reason you've forgotten which postcard you've sent to who to whom <laughs> pardon me then you'll be able to have an image um like a, a like just a documentation of which which postcards so you've sent so when i say don't forget to take your photo of the postcard before you pop it in the mailbox that's what i mean doesn't have to be a perfect photo. If they get the card and they don't like your photo, they can always upload a different photo as well. Okay, that's it everybody. Thanks again. I really appreciate you watching the video, the first video about the post crossing um, platform. And thank you for your questions and your interest. And um, yeah, I'm always here if you have some post crossing questions. And I'll, if I can't answer you, um, hopefully somebody out there will have an answer for you as well. So have a great weekend, everybody. Speak kindly to yourselves. Enjoy your snail mail and your journal process. Until the next video, I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Bye, everybody.